welcome back to another episode of Tori Talks. This is Pokemon version. And we're going to start right out with, uh, with some battling here. Ooh, it's a Pidgey. A wild Pidgey appeared. Um, so, we picked up Bird Jesus. Uh, we're, I'm doing some leveling up here uh, since, uh, since we last hung out. Wow, that didn't go really well. Today, I want to talk about something I just read about. I've been reading Doris Kearns Goodwin's uh, Team of Rivals, which is about Lincoln and his cabinet, which was put together mostly of guys who were uh, Lincoln's rivals in the um, in the primary for the Republican. Uh oh. Nope, he died. Um, in the primary for the Republican ticket for president. Uh, and I read about the night that Lincoln was assassinated, and really kind of the story that I had always heard was Lincoln goes to Ford's Theater and he's watching a show and John Wilkes Booth comes in and shoots him and he jumps out of the out of the balcony and he breaks his leg and he runs into a house and everybody chases him and then Lincoln dies on his bed and it's very tragic. Uh, and that's true. But what's even crazier about that night is the whole plot uh, of the, the assassination plot of, of Lincoln was really supposed to be a triple job. It was supposed to be uh, Lincoln, uh, Seward, who was the Secretary of State, and Vice President Andrew Johnson, who would later become the president um, after Lincoln died. And I was, oh, I just bananas. When I read about this, I thought, this is, this is crazy. We've never, I've never heard this story, and it's not one that I think a lot of people know. So basically, Here's what happens. There are three guys, Lewis Powell, George Adzerat, and John Wilkes Booth. Uh, they are Confederate sympathizers uh, in the Capitol, and they decide, okay, we're gonna, we're, oh man, we're gonna hit the Union where it hurts. Where, uh, by this point, Lee has, uh, has surrendered. The, uh, there are other Confederate forces uh, that are so that haven't officially surrendered yet, but it's it's basically over. Richmond's been taken. The Confederacy is doomed. Um, it's they're they're not going to be able to to keep battling. Basically, every major city and port of the Confederacy has been taken by the Union. So these three guys say, "Well, what can we do to get back to the Union? We're going to hit them where it hurts." Yes, nice job, Bird Jesus. Uh, we're going to hit them where it hurts. Right in the cabinet. Uh, it had long been rumored that Seward was kind of the brains behind Lincoln, which really just isn't true, and, and Kearns Goodwin does a really great job of dispelling that notion. Um, but these three guys think, like, who are the big three that we can hit? President, VP, Secretary of State. Like, those are the three big heavy hitters uh, in the Union government. So, the plan is, you know, the, the night that Lincoln was assassinated, the, pl the plan for the three, Powell, Azerot, and Booth, at 10.15, they were each going to independently assassinate one of their, um, uh, one of the three people. They each had their own target. So, um, George Azerot is pr probably the, the least interesting, I mean, I think it's very interesting, but, but it's also not crazy. Basically, he was uh, part of an earlier plot to uh, kidnap Lincoln and take him to Richmond and force... Come on, come on. Yes! Oh, we got a Rattata. I don't know how good Rattatas are, uh, but uh, I'm committed. Uh, they were going to kidnap Lincoln and take him to Richmond uh, and, and force uh, basically a treaty. And they say, uh, we'll, we'll give you Lincoln back. Uh, for demands and all sorts of things. But then Richmond was captured uh, by Grant, so they really couldn't do that. Uh, Vice President Andrew Johnson was at the Kirkwood Hotel. He had a room there, and because uh, he had just, uh, the um, VP in, in Lincoln's first term was Hannibal Hamlin. So Johnson is still pretty new. He's a, a, a senator from uh, Tennessee, I believe. And he's new, so he's staying in this hotel. And uh, Azrat gets a room in the hotel, um, but then when he finds out that the plan is to assassinate uh, Johnson, he gets cold feet. And he basically says, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up for a kidnapping. I don't want to kill people. That's not, I don't feel cool about that. 
Um, so he checked out and left. Um, and he left Washington. Um, a, a little before 10 o'clock. So he gets out right before the storm. Uh, so John Wilkes Booth, his older brother, uh, had been, uh, a f- was a famous actor at the time, uh, had been at Ford Theater a lot. You know, hey, when I go shop in Piatt, okay. Um, a Viridian Forest? Can I go? Can I go there? Oh, that's very nice of you. Remember, this is the guy that earlier was like, shut up, I don't have coffee. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Wilkes, uh, John Wilkes Booth's older brother was an actor. Uh, Booth was an actor. Uh, he was well-known around the Ford's Theater, and that really gave him a leg up in uh, getting into the Lincoln's private booth. Uh, and one of the really... I don't know if it's sad, but it's just sort of... I think there was probably a lot of guilt for certain people. Um, Lincoln had tried to get a bunch of different people to go to the theater with him that evening. Um, Kearns Goodwin says that, you know, that day, that Friday, was probably one of the best days of his life. Um, the war was ending. He was feeling really good about his life. Uh, he was feeling much better about his marriage. Um, he and Mary were finally getting over the... I don't, I don't know what I want to do. What do I want to do? He and... Uh, they were finally get a, getting over the death of their... Um, of their uh, middle son, Willie, uh, that had happened two years earlier. Uh, and they were just... Things were really looking up for the Lincoln family. He had a great day, and he went to the theater, and he's trying to get people to come with him, and um, and nobody would, would go because they, you know, had things, and uh, they, they had things they were doing, and um, Stanton, um, the Secretary of War, didn't really like the theater that much anyway, and so they end up going, and um, Wilkes Booth takes advantage of the fact that he knows people. He goes into uh, their box, and he points his pistol at the back of Lincoln's head, and he shoots. Uh, he jumps out of the booth, lands awkwardly uh, on the stage and injures himself, and runs out yelling, Six Emperor Tyrannus, uh, which means, um, thus always to the tyrants. Um, you know, that's always what happens to tyrants. They get shot in the head, basically. Um, and he runs away. He's later captured and all that stuff. Um... Uh, let's try Randy. This is not gonna go well. Try to just get him some experience. Uh, he runs away. At, at the same time that that's happening, here's what's happening to a Secretary of State Seward. Uh, this is crazy. So, about two weeks before, Seward and his younger son uh, were involved in a stagecoach accident where the horses got spooked and they ran and Seward was thrown from the stagecoach and he broke his, his shoulder. Oh, man. He broke his shoulder, he broke his jaw, um, and he was laid up in bed. And he was okay. He, you know, the danger was passed, but he was kind of in rough shape. Um, his son managed to get away without any injury. Uh, his wife and daughter were in the stagecoach and, and they managed to get away without any injury. Um, but Seward was, was hurt. Um, and he's in bed, and he's got, like, this metal contraption on his jaw to keep his jaw in place. Um, I don't think I can get there. And, uh, he's lying in bed. So Lewis Powell goes to the Seward home. It's 10 o'clock. It's dark. It's, uh, things are winding down. And he comes to the door, and he, and, and he says, Hey, I've got this medicine from the doctor that I really need to give to Secretary Seward. Ooh, I'm in the forest. What's going on here? Uh, and everybody's like, I, this is weird. Like, can we just give it to him himself? He just went to bed. Uh, Powell gets frustrated, forces his way in, and then just starts bludgeoning and stabbing people. Uh, he, he had a gun that misfired, um, but then he hit um, Seward's son in the head and broke his skull with the butt of the gun, and he stabbed a bodyguard, and he stabbed another guy, and he runs in, and he sees Seward lying on the bed. And later, Seward would, Seward would say that um, when, when he heard the commotion, he opened his eyes right as Powell was over him, about ready to stab him in the throat, to cut his throat. Uh, and he remembered seeing the guy's face and seeing it and thinking, oh, this is a handsome gentleman that's about to kill me. Kind of one of those, like, your life flashes before your eyes moments. So Powell goes to stab Seward, 
And because of the contraption, the metal thing on his face to hold his jaw in place, it, he missed his throat and he instead cut his cheek and just a big gash right through his cheek. Um, and there's just blood everywhere. And he had already stabbed like three other people at this point. Uh, he knocked down somebody and he ran away. Oh, and it ran. Um, so it's just crazy. There's, his son is in critical condition. Seward is bleeding everywhere. They think they might have cut his, his jugular. Uh, it's just horrible. Um, and there's like three or four other people who, one guy got cut in the face, and another guy got cut in the arm, and um, blood everywhere. The, the doctor that came later said, like, there was, there was literally blood everywhere. I walked in blood, and my shoes were sticking to the floor. Um, and this is all happening at the exact same time that John Wilkes Booth is shooting Lincoln. So this is happening, and then it said, people went to Stanton's, uh, Secretary of War Stanton, and said, like, hey, um, the, uh, the Secretary of State has been assassinated. Oh, boy. Here's b -b 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 blue Oh, man. I'm, I'm not confident about this. Let's, let's see how this goes. Um, and they're saying he's assassinated, like Lincoln got shot. Um, it was just a commotion. Um, and the crazy thing about Lincoln's assassination to me it is, along with all these other things, all of the could could have happened. It's like, what could have happened? What if Andrew Johnson was killed? Um, Johnson wouldn't have, you know, ascended to the presidency. He wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be impeached. He wouldn't do all the things. Uh, he, they may have had someone ascend to the presidency who would have treated the South uh, with more leniency the way that Lincoln wanted to. Um, Lincoln hung on for like nine hours. He died at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and he was not conscious, but he was breathing and um, he had a bullet in his head. Like, that's crazy. He's just a, an incredible person. Like, and his physical fortitude to uh, withstand that um, is it, just incredible. So what would have happened if Johnson had been killed? Uh, what, if, what would have happened if Seward had been killed? Because um, Seward went on to serve under Johnson. Uh, to, he, he went on to purchase Alaska. Seward's Folly is what it was talked about at the time. But he purchased Alaska, which would become a, a state. Um, so many things could have ended differently. Um, the newspaper in Richmond, uh, the former capital of the Confederacy, recognized the assassination of Lincoln as a huge blow to Reconstruction in the South um, because they knew that no one would be as uh, willing to welcome uh, the secessionist states. This is, this is bad. Oh, boy. No one would be as willing to welcome the secessionist states back into the Union the way that Lincoln would. Um, a word that was constantly cited of Lincoln was his magnanimity. Um, he, he was so magnanimous, so gracious that he was going to let these uh, states back in without the harsh penalties and the, uh, the military governors and the, all those sorts of things. This is, this is just over right now. Um, so yeah, just crazy. And a lot of things that I didn't know, holy smokes, uh, that I didn't know about. Uh, that are, ended up being really important. Um, you know, Secretary of State Seward was millimeters from, from death. Uh, his jug, jugular was not severed. Um, and if it had been, he, he would have died in, in minutes. Um, so yeah, I blacked out. Uh, anyway, hope you really enjoyed that story. I think it's really fascinating. Um, thankful to Doris Kearns Goodwin. But this has been Tory Talks. We'll hope to see you next time.